Hi, welcome to my channel Mostly Knitting. If you're new here, I'm Tash and this is a weekly podcast where I talk mostly about the knitting that I've been doing during the week. I'm a high school maths teacher here in Sydney, Australia and I live in the southern suburbs of Sydney with my husband, my three children who are 16, 18 and 21 and our dog Gus who's about 13. Right, so I usually start off with my finished objects if I have any, and I do. I have one finished object today, and this is the Sophie Scarf by Petite Knit. And I knit this out of Rowan Patina, and which is um, a really lovely, soft, fluffy yarn. Um, it is 46% mohair, 24% nylon, 20% wool, and 10% polyester. And it's got like um, some flex, I think that's the polyester, like some shiny bits. So um, this, this yarn has great yardage. 50 grams is 250 meters, but because it's so fluffy, it knits up at a DK weight gauge. And so this scarf ended up being um, 26 grams, so very lightweight. And it was 45 inches long from tip to tip and four and a half inches wide. So this is for my mum. I made one already for her in like a gray color out of Madeline Tosh, uh, Tosh Merino DK. Um, and so that was that one was like 60 grams so this one's definitely a lot lighter only 26 grams um, for about the same size so I'll just try it on it doesn't go with what I'm wearing at the moment but that's okay um, so it should be enough just to um, wrap around and tie so she, my mum's going overseas in a few weeks so that will just be a nice little scarf for her to, to take um, to keep her warm, just to keep her neck warm. So yeah, I'm really happy with it. It's nice and soft and um, hopefully she'll like it. So, <clears throat> excuse me, I think that's all I had to say about that one. I knitted it on a 3.5 mil needle. Um, actually, I did have to um, go up to 35 stitches. So when I got to the half, what I thought was the halfway point for the pattern, for the largest size, it was, um, and I blocked it, it wasn't going to be, um, it definitely wasn't going to be long enough so i just added two more repeats and got to 35 stitches so yep yeah, and i think that's fine it would have i reckon if i had have only done 33 sorry trying it on again if i had have done 33 i just think it would have been a bit short um yeah so anyway um my only finished object for the week so very happy about that one and i'll give that to um my mum she can i think she's already started her packing uh right so um I'm going to do my friend from the vault segment, which is where I talk about a knit that I've um, done earlier and I'm actually wearing it. And this is Adventurous by Hohi Locatelli. It's a coat more than a cardigan. It's actually very long. Um, I knit it out of Miss Babs Yowza in the colorway Envy. And I bought this in 2015 when I was at um, Super Summer Knit Together in Nashville, which was just such a wonderful experience. It was the most amazing retreat. So um, I didn't buy a lot of yarn there. I wish I'd bought more, but um, you know, that's all right. The, the yarn that I did buy there is really special and I have actually knit most of it. I've got a little bit still left in stash. Um, yeah, thinking about that, I probably should get on and knit some of it. Uh, right, so this is actually, I'll stand up and show you. It's huge. Um, I'm going to come close and show you the cables because it's just amazing. It's got these beautiful Celtic cables, um, a cable braid down the arm and I'll put up some, um, if, if I can, I'll put up some photos as well but um, I'm just going to turn around and show you the back because it's just so beautiful. It's hard for me to tell. <laughs> you can see maybe I'll you know what maybe I'll hold it up <laughs> maybe I'll take it off and hold it up okay so uh, let's see oh that's better so that's the um the cables down the back and it just is finished with um with a garter edge so it has this one big central cable and then these other braids down the side and then um, also on the on the sleeves, and then a garter end. So the um, the Miss Babs is like each ball is like 512 meters. So it's called Yowza because each ball is just enormous. I'm going to keep it off actually because it's um it's really warm here today. So um, but yeah, I just it's so pretty. Um, so it weighs 723 grams, which is a bit of an issue. I followed the pattern exactly. 
and the way that it's written is seamlessly and what that means is there's no seams to sort of hold the structure and the Miss Babs Yowza is a superwash merino so um, it's just a lot of weight in the garment so it's pretty heavy it tends to fall off my shoulders a little bit so I don't wear it as often as I as I might like um, and like it's just such a stunning color this colorway envy um, and so when I wear it I'm usually just wearing like black pants and a black top so that um, so that this is the this is the star yeah so um, so I made it in 2016 so I was really keen to make it soon after um, after I got the yarn and soon after the pattern came out. I made the extra small size, which is a 31 inch, and it took me five months to make because when I made it in 2016, I had just started back at work full time and I'm part time now. Um, I have Wednesdays off, but at the time I was full time. I was doing my registration. I had three kids. I think they were all, yeah, they were all in primary school. <laughs> so it was, it was just, a lot that year was crazy so it took me um, it did take me five months to knit it but I'm really I am really proud of it it was it was a, an amazingly enjoyable knit and it wasn't as hard as it might seem like cables are actually probably one of the easiest things to sort of you know go up in your knitting easier than fair off because you don't sort of have the same tension issues um, but yeah I'm really really happy with it and I um, and I love it. The only downside is the just the weight of it and not having any seams. So what I could do is just along the shoulder, like just show you where, maybe just along the shoulder, oh, got it all caught, um, along this shoulder here, I could um, maybe crochet something on the inside to stabilize that a little bit because you can sort of see it's got this lovely um, thing that runs all around the back neck but um, but because it's there's no there's no seams there and it's just all like all of that's hanging off it sort of just falls down a little bit so like you can see actually if I'm just even as I'm sitting here like it just wants to it wants to fall off me so it's a bit of a shame so I'm always sort of hugging it um, or sort of pulling it to keep it around me but there's plenty of sweater there so I made the 31 inch size um, but like, you know, if I pull it around, I can definitely wrap it around me, but it won't stay, right? It'll just sort of here and fall off. Anyway, it's, it's beautiful, but I just want to be honest about that aspect of it. Definitely, um, I'm definitely really glad I made it and I really should just pull it out and wear it more and just deal with the fact that it falls off. It's not that big a deal. Uh, right. Um, so now I am up to my works in progress. I have one new work in progress, which has really only just started. I just started it this morning, and that is Early Bloomer by Heidi Kiermaier. And I'm use, using some of the yarn that I got from um, the US recently. And that's um, this yarn here, the Dirurum Natura Penelope in the colorway Orgeat. I don't know if that's how you say it, or Orgeat, O-R-G-E-A-T. And that is a 90% wool and 10% silk, and it's non-superwash. So I did a swatch on it last night and blocked it. And I pretty much got gauge for Early Bloomer, maybe a tiny bit bigger. So Early Bloomer has a 22 stitch gauge and I'm getting about 21 and I think it might stretch out to about 20. So as a result, I'm knitting the XXS, which is 31 inches. And I'm expecting to come out about maybe 33, 34 inches, which is about two inches of positive ease for me, which is about what the pattern actually recommends. So I think if, I'm, if I knit the 31 with a slightly larger gauge, it should turn up around 33, 34. So I'll show you my swatch. Um, this is it there, and uh, it looks like um, really nice stitch definition. It's lovely and soft, like that would, um, because it's a top, I really wanted something that was gonna be next to skin soft, which it definitely is. Um, I don't really feel the 10% silk um, component. It just feels nice and soft. It feels like, just like a wool. And so uh, for the pattern, you do a provisional cast on, which is that pink yarn here. Um, so I've just done the provisional cast on and I've done the first two rows and then I'm about to start increasing. Because in this pattern, you actually sort of start down here with a provisional cast on, you then do all the color work and the rest of the sweater. And then you come back and pick up stitches around the neckline and do the short rows at the back and then the ribbing. 
And so the contrast color that um, I'm, or well, the contrast yarn that I'm planning on using for it is um, some leftovers from a blanket that I made. This is from a um, DK, Madeline Tosh DK Twist Gradient. And so I think um, in the design, there's like six bands and then you also have like a trim around the neckline. So I've got eight colors and I'm sure this would be plenty. So I thought maybe if I, I could do like a gradient, um, I just have to get them in the right order and maybe do the, I think what I might do is darkest at the top and then go down to lightest. And then maybe I just wouldn't do the, um, the lightest color. It sort of jumps a bit from this one to the next one, which is significantly lighter. Um, but that's okay. Let's see. Um, this one, this one. So how many have I got there? Oh, I just lost one. One, two, three, four, five, six, seven, six, seven, and then the last one, eight. That one might, I might skip that obviously. Like if I do one for the bands and then going down, there'll be seven more for the sections. Um, that one might be a bit light anyway, so I'll skip that one. That will be the that will be the last one. So yeah, I'm excited about a new color work um, project, and I think what I will do is um, I somebody was asking for me in one of my tutorials to show how I do color work. So I thought, great, I'll use this one as a um, as what and I'll video myself in terms of how I hold the yarn. So I hold the um, the main color in my right hand and knit English style with the main color and the contrast color in my left hand and knit continental with a contrast color. And that keeps the yarn dominance in the, you know, where the, um, the, the contrast color should pop because it's running underneath. And also really helps me with my tension because the yarn, and I'll talk about this more in the video, but because the, the left, the yarn on the left hand has to travel a little bit further um, when you're doing your floats and everything, it actually helps. Um, it just makes it easier to make the floats long enough without um, you know, having them too tight and puckering. So yeah, so that, that video will be coming up soon. So that's my, that's my only new work in progress. And to be honest, it's only just barely, um, just barely started. And yep, so that's, and I, I think what I'm really focused on with my new um, cast, casts on, cast, new projects, um, is to try new yarn. And so like that's, this is a new yarn to me, obviously not the DK twist, but the Penelope is new and it feels really nice. So that's um, work in progress number one and work in progress number two, I've changed, um, you can probably see, cause I wanted to try on um, my second work in progress. And that is the Stockholm Slipover by Petite Knit. So you can see, um, I think last week I'd only done the neck. Now I've done both armhole, um, ribbing treatments and I did a tubular bind off. And so this is, um, sorry, I should say, this is the Stockholm Slipover by Petite Knit. I am using um, Rowan Felted Tweed DK in the colorway Scree, and that's Knitting for Olive um, Soft Silk Mohair in the colorway Soft Blue. So those two together, just creating a nice soft tweedy um, fabric for um, a slipover. I used a 4.5 millimeter needle for the body, um, and a, which is recommended, and a 3.5 millimeter needle for the ribbing. I did pick up a few less stitches. Um, the pattern instructs you to pick up one for one everywhere, including like one stitch for every row and for every cast on stitch. I definitely did one for one on the angles and on the cast ons, but on the vertical, I did three for four. So, and I did the same with the, um, with the armholes. And I think I would have had too many stitches if I had have just done one for one everywhere. Right, so I'm knitting the 35 and three quarter inch size and the gauge is 19 stitches and I'm pretty much on gauge because when I measured it, it's about 35 inches. So I'll just try it on. Um, there's not much to go now. So this is kind of, the reason I um, changed into this white blouse is this is the kind of thing that I think I would wear it over um, for work. So I'm about nine inches down the body, but you can see, hopefully you can see where it is um, here. Like it just, if I had picked up more stitches around the armholes, I think it would be, um, it would be puckering or flaring. I think this is not puckering, flaring. Um, yeah, I think like, I like how this is sitting and I still have a bit to go. So I've got this shirt tucked in. So I could wear it with something like that with a shirt tucked in, or um, I do see people wear things like this with their shirt out. 
you know, like, and then um, it comes to a certain point. I just haven't figured out, I haven't figured out how long I want it to be. And, and I'll probably play around with it. Like, like obviously this isn't, um, I'll just stand back. It's not long enough yet. So nine inches, this is nine inches from right here, is not long enough yet. Um, this is where I get to a bit of a point of, I'll be like, uh, probably at least two more inches. So, I'll, oh, but then I've also got the ribbing. So um, it's not a lot of ribbing, it's probably only about an inch. So, but I'll be trying it on pretty much, do an inch, try it on, do an inch, try it on. So this is not, um, for me, it's not portable knitting anymore, even though it's only stockinette in the round. It's not portable because I'm just gonna have to keep trying it on and I'll need to, what if I'm not wearing something like this? I'll get changed, try it on with what I wanna wear it with. Um, yeah, but I think it's coming out really nicely. That's three inches of positive ease for me, which I definitely wanted when it's going to sit over like a, a button up blouse. Um, yeah, so, but like I think it's, um, I don't actually, I don't have a lot of vests, I don't wear a lot of vests, but I think this, especially when we have um, air conditioning in the office, it can be really ramped up. So it's like really hot outside, but you're freezing inside. So just having something like this to throw over, just to keep my chest warm, um, I think I'd, you know, it's, it's a good thing. Right, so that's um, work in progress number two. I'm gonna get changed for work in progress number three. So work in progress number three is camisole number four by My Favourite Things Knitwear. And I'm knitting it out of Knitting for Olive Pure Silk in the colorway Raspberry Pink. Now I haven't finished it, um, I've just got it on, but it's on the needles on me. Um, so I'm only about six, uh, six inches down the body. So definitely a bit to go. This is my second ball of yarn. What I hadn't done last week was I hadn't, um, I hadn't done the straps at all. So I haven't actually finished them. You can see it's sort of curling a little bit on the side. I probably need to give it another block. Um, so I haven't finished, I've, I, I put the provisional stitches, um, the provisional cast on stitches and did the I, four stitch I cord. And, but I haven't finished it. I haven't grafted it to the back yet. I've just got it clipped with these clover clips and I've been putting it on a hanger at night um, when, you know, like, and just to sort of let it drop a little bit and then I'm just working my way down the body. So there's really nothing else to do now except finish the body and then just adjust with the straps, either make them a little bit longer or, um, or maybe take a few rows out if they've, um, but at least it was enough for me to get it down to where I could sort of put it on and actually put it on the hanger and have the weight of the body hanging off it. So I did 53 rows on each side and then I'll just wait and see if I need to. Um, and I just use the same size needle. I think you meant to in the pattern, the three mil needle, same as in the rest of the body. And yeah, I'm happy with how it's going. I'll just stand up just a tiny bit just to where that's where I'm up to, just there. Um, so I've still got a bit of a way, a bit of a way to go. Um, oh, and I did mean I was going to show you, that's my new tattoo that um, Alex and I, um, Alex and I got the same tattoo and me also came. So it was me and my two daughters, Alex and Mia, and my mother-in-law, um, Cindy. The four of us went and got tattoos um, like about a couple of weeks ago, 10 days ago. And so Alex, that's, I think it's healing really well actually. So they're dragonflies. So yeah, I said I'd show it this week. Um, Yes, and I'm gonna. I'm just gonna keep this on right now because it's nice and cool, and I, I probably won't be standing up again. So, yes, it's very hot here in Sydney. So, camisole number four. I reckon I'll have this finished. Um, well, I hope to have this finished by, if if not next week, it just depends. I'm really busy at the moment, so, and depends what I put my work into and whether I'm. This actually, it kind of is portable now because all I'm doing is the body, and I, I definitely know I've got a few more inches to go, but when I start getting closer, that's when I'll just keep it at home and be trying it on um, regularly. So that's um, work in progress number three. Work in progress number four is my, there's two more to go, my half and half wrap. I've put it on a slightly longer needle now. Um, this is the half and half wrap by Pearl Soho. And I've made quite, actually, let me show you from this side. That's where I was um, last week. So I've done 34, no, 32 more ridges and um, I've knit 38 grams in the last week. So it's, it is, um, yeah, it's getting, getting longer. Um, but I'm not, I'm still not like at the halfway point with the stitches. So there's two, there were 260 stitches cast on and every ridge you, um, you sort of do, you do a short row and you're one, it's a free pattern 
you're one shorter from the end. And I think I've got about 106 here, which means I've got about 154 here. So although obviously my, my rows are getting shorter and I've got, how much have I got? I've got, uh, how much left? 30, uh, no, 56 grams left on this ball. So just a bit more than I've knit about one and a half um, I should tell you what the yarn is. So the yarn is um, Pearl Soho Linen Quill, and this is Baby Bird Blue, and my contrast color, I actually remembered to grab it, is um, Red Poppy, and that's my little, that's my little swatch of the two of them together. And I was playing around with stitch treatments for the edge. That's my wrap and turn short rows, which I really like. Um, I know some people have done German short rows, but I think that looks really nice. And the, um, with the edge, I've just been slipping the first stitch knitwise. And so that doesn't, um, it doesn't create an I-cord edge. All it does is for, it keeps the garter, the garter edge, but it just compresses those two edge stitches and just keeps them a little bit tidier. So yeah, I did heaps of different swatching and that's what I ended up landing on. And for me also, that means there's just less to think about. Um, yep, and I'm really happy with how that is coming along. And I'm actually quite excited to get to, I'm not rushing it. This is like, um, this is my grab and don't have to think knitting, which is wonderful. It's not really portable because it's getting so heavy. Um, like I couldn't walk and knit with this, but it's certainly, um, it's certainly uh, a knit that occupies pretty much no brain power. So if I'm in the car and my son's driving because he's on his L's, um, I'll knit on this because I don't have to think and I, I don't have to look. I can just, um, yeah, so it still comes with me everywhere. So it's, I guess it's portable in that sense. Like it, I take it everywhere, but it's not, um, but I can't walk and knit with it. So um, yeah, and it's getting a bit big and bulky. Anyway, that's, I'm very happy with how that's going. And my last work in progress is um, the Skimmer Socks by Sheila Toy Stromberg. And I'm knitting this out of Dingo Dye Works Ridgy Didge, which is some leftovers from um, a dress that I made, the Ebb dress. And I had 40 grams, so plenty of yarn for these little no-show socks. These are for my mum, and I actually had her, I had to, I stalled from a little bit because I had to get her to try it on because her feet are so much smaller than mine. Um, and so I did six rows less for her. I, I got her to try it on yesterday. So I've actually now done the heel, and I'm at the point where it's, it's kind of not um, walking knitting anymore because I'm about to finish off this um, gusset section and then pick up stitches around the side and do the ribbing. So I'm on a 2.25 millimeter needle um, here, and when I do the ribbing, I'll be on a two millimeter needle. So yeah, I'm looking, I think this color is so pretty and just got some really lovely, she doesn't dye anymore, unfortunately, Dingo Dye Works, but um, yeah, it was really beautiful. And yeah, I think they're gonna make really nice socks for my mum. So I'm, I'm looking forward to finishing this one. And then, cause I didn't split the ball. I mean, I need to learn my lesson. Split the ball, although I suppose I could just cast on another pair of skimmer socks and just have two going at the same time, but I don't really like doing that. So in future, I should just split the ball. Um, but there's something that bothers me about that because then I'll have two little balls left. And st but you're like, what? There'll be two little balls of three grams each. What does it matter? I'm not gonna do, I can't make anything with that anyway. It's already leftovers. Just split it in two and then I can actually, because I could go for a walk tomorrow with, like if I had this in two balls, but now I won't be able to take this with me for a walk until I've finished this one so that I've, and, and I really don't want to try because I'm knitting, pulling from the center. I don't want to try winding off from the other end and just ending up with a tangled mess. So anyway, enough babbling about that. Um, I'm really happy with how this is coming along and I think it will be really nice socks for my mum. Right, so that's it for my works in progress. Um, my acquisitions, the only acquisition was um, I bought the pattern Early Bloomer by Heidi Kiermaier. I love her patterns. They're really well written, um, very clear. So yes, I'm looking forward to knitting this one, but that's the only acquisition that I made this week. So I'm up to what has caught my eye. So a few things have caught my eye. Um, one thing is Karen's, um, who's Kazurina girl, she finished a cami number nine and she used Sandiscan Tin Lina in this really beautiful pink colorway. And so that has just, I already wanted to make cami number nine anyway, but that just kind of egged me on a bit because it's just such a lovely classic um, 
shell tank sort of top. Um, very good for wearing either for work or um, just, you know, with jean, jeans or shorts or linen pants or something. So yeah, so that has caught my eye. Another thing that's caught my eye, and I can't remember where I saw it, but the Harlow sweater by Kadri, um, completely different kind of knit, a turtleneck, um, knit at 19 stitch gauge, probably like a sport or DK with a, with a lace weight held together complete opposite of summer knit to very wintry knit. Um, but I, And I'm not normally into turtlenecks, but this one just looked like it was out a little bit, so it wasn't strangling. So anyway, I just noticed it and um, I think I favorited it. If I haven't, I should, because um, I'll forget about it otherwise. I don't put things into my queue unless I really plan to make them, but I do put a lot of things into my favorites, just otherwise I'll forget. Um, another thing that, I, that caught my eye was the Sunday Tea by Petite Knit. And I think the thing that I really liked about this is that it's knit in a fingering weight yarn, but at, a, at quite a fine gauge, so at 28 stitches over four inches. And for her, um, for her pat or for the her sample, I guess she knitted out of Fukulana. Uh, Fukulana? I don't know how to say that. Fukulana. Mercy, in, and that's a cotton wool blend. So 50 grams is about 200 meters. So I could use knitting for olive cotton merino for that. Um, it just looks really pretty. So that's another like sort of summery, summery ish because it has um, sleeves top, um, but at a nice fine gauge, which I really do like that. I, th I quite like the fine gauge tops. I'm more likely when I've, when I've been looking at my um, summer tanks and tees, the ones that I actually wear are the ones that are, are at a finer gauge. If they're that makes me think about early bloomer now, but that's not so much, that's more like a, I do wear those sorts of things with, um, like with dress pants and things. So I don't really think of that. Early bloomer will not really be a summer knit for me because that's DK wool. And so that's more like a work in, in autumn or winter. Um, whereas the Sunday tea, I'm thinking like shorts and a, like, um, shorts and that's the top, right? So, um, yeah, anyway, that one's caught my eye and I'm, I'm keen to, I'll have a look at what cotton merino I have in my stash or I might get some more cotton merino. I'm not buying, like, not buying, like what has caught my eye is not stuff that I'm running out and getting, but it is like a, if I'm thinking about getting some yarn, I'll, I'll you know, I'll go to my favorites in the, those things that have caught my eye and um, think, oh yeah, I like that top and I'll get yarn for that. Um, another thing that has caught my eye is I'm um, just a person on Instagram and that's Maria Sverden. I'll put um, the spelling down below. Um, she just has some really beautiful projects and um, yeah, I think I must have just seen her on Instagram and started following her and she has really nice knitwear. So I just, whenever I see someone that, like I like to follow people who've, um, who are making beautiful things and they're inspiring for me. So when I, what has caught my eye, I thought I'll share that with you as well in case you are not already following her. Um, right, so that's it for what has caught my eye. Um, my next section is plans. And because I did just start um, the early bloomer, that's kind of my next wool project um, that will get, you know, once I finish the Stockholm sweater, I'll, that will get in um, heavier rotation. Um, but I would like something that's cotton um, after I finish this one, so a summer-ish top. And so after seeing Karen's cami number nine, that's just reminded me, yes, I definitely want to make that. So that's my knitting for olive um, cotton merino. And that's in the colorway bark. And I just want to see what the, um, so that's 50 grams, 250 meters. So um, yeah, really good yardage and like a really nice lightweight, um, really good for what I was talking about, summer tops. And I think that would be a really nice yarn for the Sunday tea by Petite Knit. So Maybe in a, I don't know, I'll have to think about colors, but yeah, and also how much I'd need. But anyway, I don't need that, think about that just yet. Right, so that's it for plans. I'm moving right along. Um, so before I get into personal stuff, I just, um, there was something that I wanted to mention, and it was something that Hella from Danish Musings mentioned on her podcast. And she said that sometimes she gets people asking her questions around a pattern, they're confused around something, and they're asking her for help relating to that. And her thoughts on that was that, like, I knit this so long ago, I can't really remember. And also for something like that, that's probably for the designer to answer. That's part of their job in, um, in producing a design. They've been um, paid for that pattern. 
and it's really up to them to provide pattern support. It's their pattern and they're going to be the person who's um, best able to answer the question. So um, I've had a few questions from people asking um, about a pattern that I might have knit and just been confused about the instructions and I certainly can't answer it from the top of my head and it might have been something that I made a while ago. So without a lot of investigation, and even then, I don't feel like I'm the best person to answer it. So I think I'll take that approach as well. Um, like sometimes I do tutorials on particular things that I've made and they're very fresh in my mind, like the field sweater. Um, I did a lot of tutorials on that. But then if somebody asked me a specific question about the pattern, I wouldn't remember now. And so once I've put out like a video about it, that's kind of, that's the help that I can provide. Um, but most of the time I won't actually be able to, without a lot of you know work trying to figure it out, I won't be able to answer those sorts of questions. And to be honest, I think that actually, that, um, that responsibility does lie with the designer. And some, some designers aren't great about providing pattern support, um, but maybe if more people are asking them, then either their patterns will be a little bit clearer or they'll feel like they need to start actually responding or people won't buy their patterns. Um, one thing I will say about um, Anka from uh, Anka Strick from that test knit that I did on the armor sweater, she was so responsive to all of our questions, and yeah, I really appreciate that in a in a designer, and it's something that um, I like, um, and it will help me to want to purchase their patterns more if they're really responsive to those sorts of questions. And I thought I should share as well. Um, it was so lovely. Uh, Anka said that after the test knit, she was. Um, she mentioned in, in our thread, if there's any pattern that we as testers of hers that we would like to make, just put a message in the thread and she'll send us the pattern. So I thought that was really lovely. Um, I haven't had a, like, um, you know, a scan through her patterns um, recently, but I, obviously I love the armor and I like her aesthetic. So it's just, I thought that was really generous, a really nice thing as an offer to us testers that if we want to make any other of her patterns, just to let her know. Right, so that's it for that little other segment. Um, I'll just get into the personal stuff and that will be very quick because not much has been happening. Um, last week, um, we had my in-laws with us, um, which was really lovely. We had a great time with them. Um, uh, but then my husband started getting a bit sick and he tested a couple of times for COVID and was negative, negative, and then finally tested positive. So um, our in-laws were about to go on a cruise. So they were a bit nervous about that. So they actually left us a day early and went and stayed in a hotel um, just to, you know, have space uh, from, um, just so that they didn't uh, catch it from him. And thankfully none of us have. So um, I, I didn't catch it, my kids didn't catch it and they didn't catch it, thankfully. Um, so I think he tested positive last, last Wednesday. So a week ago um, in the afternoon. So like, so yeah, that was, and he's since tested again and is negative now. So yes, thankfully, because I have so much work on at the moment, but that has been, so we did have to say goodbye to them um, earlier than we would have liked, which is a shame, um, but it was just lovely to, lovely to have them here for the time that we did. Um, other than that, really nothing has been, like there's really nothing else besides my work. I spent all last weekend writing an exam. Um, now I'm marking because um, other, you know, kids are doing topic tests and things. So even though it's my day off today um, and I'm recording, which is really lovely, I've got a big stack of um, topic tests to mark and lessons to write and things. So yeah, it's term time, middle of the term. We're right in the middle of the term at the moment. It's just, it's all about work. And I might, you know, I'm, I'm going out for walks and things and meeting friends for walks and stuff, which is just part of, you know, staying healthy. But other than that, it's work, church, buying groceries, hanging out with the kids, with my husband going for walks. That's kind of it. So yeah, nothing, um, nothing coming up in the next couple of weeks, but um, yeah, so as a result, I can finish now. Um, thank you so much for watching. I am definitely going to keep up with this each week. I am enjoying it. And I was a little bit unsure about whether I could um, keep it up, but if I just keep it concise, um, I, can, I can do these each week and I'm really enjoying it. And I think I'm back on track with tutorials now as well. So I'll just like, my next one will be, I just did one on the hat decreases. Um, like how much yarn to leave and then my next one's going to be um, I'll, I'll video myself when I'm um, how I knit fairer right so hope everyone's having a lovely week you're enjoying your knitting enjoying all the other stuff that's non-knitting related and I'll see you next week bye